Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Welcome to my shop. I'd like to discuss today files and rasps. Everybody is familiar with these tools, but few know the full breadth of what they can do for you. Many of the jobs formerly done with files are done today with sophisticated machinery, CNC in some cases. However, for a small shop owner working on a small scale, you can still get these jobs done with a simple file. Files and rafts have three distinguishing characteristics. The first is their length, which is their length exclusive of the tang. So this would be a 12 inch file right here. The second characteristic is their kind or name. And that usually gives you some idea of their purpose and use. The third is the cut. There are two kinds of cuts. The first is a single cut file, as is this one, and it has a single row of forward leaning sharp teeth for its length. They are angled slightly to the center line of the file. This is what is called a mill file. It is the most common and extensively used of all files and is great for filing any flat or curved surface. Those teeth are also put on the sides, and, but very often when you want to file into a corner like that, say, you don't want to erode this corner, but you want to file this face. And so files can be purchased, but you can, anytime you want to make them, have one side uh, safe. And that is, I have ground off the edge of that file. I've ground, ground the teeth blunt so that it will only file on the face here. I have the other one when I have to file two faces. There are also double cut files in which you have one row of teeth going this way and another row of teeth going this way. A single cut file tends to be a little more aggressive where a double cut file will leave a smoother finish in its wake. The first row of teeth is called the upcut and the second row is called the overcut and together it's possible to leave a very smooth finish. The teeth are also progressively coarser from coarse, which is the coarsest of all files, with the exception there are very coarse single cut files called floats. They have been and still are used in auto body shops. They often have curved teeth like this from the center line. And this one will fit in a frame that makes it, you can use it a little bit like a hand plane, a float. But in normal files, you have coarse. The second most aggressive file is a bastard cut. Yeah, this is a, a bit of a swear word today, but at the time that it was coined, it simply meant a, meant a child born out of wedlock didn't have the negative connotation that it does today. We'll stick with the term for this video. Uh, after Bastard, there's second cut, and then there is smooth. Now, when you go to double cut files, they go one grade finer called dead smooth because they will leave a better finish. And with a dead smooth file, you can leave a very good finish indeed. Let's go back to the kind or name. We've already discussed the mill file, which is tapered from about the center to its tip. And it probably is the most useful shape of all files. Uh, the second type is a pillar file. And pillar files, this is a single cut, 
this is a double cut, are the same width end to end. And again, in some situations, they're a little more handy. A second kind is a square file. These are very useful for making a drilled hole into a square hole. And being tapered, you can get down in metal or wood and do that job handily. There are also round files, which a chainsaw file is a common one we all use at times. And it is the same diameter end to end. A more common, especially in rasps, these are two small rasps, is a tapered end to it. And it, this type of file is called a rat tail file because it mimics the shape of a rat's tail. Another very handy file that in past times was called a three square file, but today is called a triangular file, is used extensively for sharpening hand saws. And that will fit in and file those teeth perfectly. Another handy file that I like to use is a checkering file. I'll show you how that works in a few minutes. But going over to rasps, rasps are cut a little different from files where these have teeth that run the width of the file. Rasps, uh, a small punch comes in and punches often in a random pattern and that leaves little sharp teeth sticking up. So this is really like hyper aggressive sandpaper that will never clog and never wear out. Speaking of clogging, files will clog up, especially with metal, not quite so bad with wood. With, a, uh, with wood, you can do several things. You can put chalk on the file or you can uh, spray it with uh, silicone uh, first before you start to file uh, or uh, just put paste wax on it. And all of the, any of these will help to keep the wood from sticking to it. For metal, uh, they can really load up and a great trick with a metal file is just take blackboard chalk and put a little of that in the teeth before you start to work. When the teeth do become clogged, it is an easy matter to take what's called a file card. Most, you can get these as separate or you can get them in a combination like this. This has little wire teeth that will can be run across and they will just drag all that swarth right out of there. You can follow up with the brush to get everything out. And for rasps, they, you just use the brush pretty much. You don't need the other one. So that's an important accessory that's good to have around to keep your files in good condition. A common job in metal is to file something either flat or octagon or in this case, hexagon. And it is not all that hard to make a, a surface perfectly flat with a file. The way you want to hold it is first you want a handle on the file. They're very useful, make it a lot safer, especially if you're using them to sharpen something like a chainsaw blade. And you want to grab it between your thumb and forefinger or even this middle finger right there and hold it like you were trying to bend it like that and lay it down and now just slide it forwards and it should be picked up between strokes if you slide backwards you're further dulling your tooth but you see how I'm holding a very nice flat here could actually use a more aggressive file. This is a coarse file.
And you can see that I'm quickly bringing this up flat. And if I now go to a dead smooth cut in a pillar file, I could use a handle, but I don't have one. But you can see it isn't removing much metal, but it is bringing this to a polish. A second way to file things only works with a single cut, generally a mill or a pillar file is used for this. I will take a single cut mill file and I'll just hold it in my hands like it was a draw knife or a spoke shave and I'll put it down and either draw it towards me or away from me. I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually ribbons of cast iron coming off of this. There, it's nice and straight, free of nicks and I can go do some turning and my tools are just going to slide along and I'll get perfect coves and beads. So that's draw filing. Great technique. A file that belongs in everyone's shop is a warding file. They have a lot more taper from the center to the tip than a mill file has. They're generally thinner. I've ground one side of each of these safe so that I could work up to a corner without eroding the corner. They were formerly used for the art of warding, which was making locks. That's why the head of a prison is called the warden. He ran the locks. Today, they're still used by locksmiths to do repair on high-end locks when they don't work as smooth as they should. But they're also excellent for sharpening all kinds of weird stuff in your shop. I like to have a couple of sizes. Uh, putting the safe side against the auger point here, I can slope this down, copying the slope that is already on there. Handle would make this a little safer. There, I've given some clearance behind that edge. I have a nice sharp edge. I will now put the safe edge down in there. You can see there's a flat spot on the lip which cuts around before this cuts out the center. And I'm just going to go in there like that. <laughs> this warding file is a second cut. It's a single cut. And second cut leaves a pretty nice finish behind it. There's our sharpened auger bit, ready to drill a couple hundred more holes. You can also do Forstner bits with equal ease with this file. A little known and very useful file in a woodworking shop is a checkering file. This is a double cut file except that the first cut or the up cut runs straight down the file and the overcut runs across. And you place it down and this is one of the few files you never lift. And And there I've made perfectly parallel lines. And I'm just going to pick it up about half the width of the file. Put more pressure on the right hand side, the left as you're looking at it. And 
I'm going to work my way right down the piece. There. Now I'll come over here about 30 degrees. There, we've checkered that, which gives it a texture. It's good to use on any kind of a thumb knob or something like that, uh, and uh, or any place you want some checkering. Again, it can it works in metal or wood. Here we have three rasps running from coarse to second cut, and here is a fine rasp right here. This is French, handmade, very expensive, but a great rasp. These are three Nicholson files, which uh, can still be purchased today. This is a uh, number 49, this is a 50, and this is coarse. This would be uh, bastard, and this would be second cut. That would be fine. So. Rasps are quite easy to use, and again, the teeth are quite different, but we can just come up here like this. One with this coarse cut, we can remove a lot of material fast. It is somewhat useful to come in here first and break this edge a little so that not so likely to tear out on this edge as we come through. So going to a bastard cut, you can see how that, and I can turn it over. This is a half round file and for ages They've been referred to as a cabinet maker's rasp. I can also go to this French rasp. Trying to do this with sandpaper, it's hard to hold a flat here. This will become rounded. If you want to just have an emergency rasp in the shop, a very handy one to have, which is under 20 bucks today, is what's called a shoe rasp. And it has nothing to do with shoes that we wear, it's horses shoes. They uh, are old, old tool of farriers, or blacksmiths that shoe horses. And it is rasp at a coarse cut for half its length. And this would be for filing the actual hoof of the horse and it is a coarse cut for the other half. So you can go from rasping the uh, hoof to filing the shoe, but it so it's good for wood. And for 20 bucks, it'll get you out of a bad situation. Another set of rasps that belong in every woodworking shop is a set of riffler files. This name is kind of obscure, but it connotes a file which is bent, usually at the tip. Rifflers for carving are common amongst carvers are generally double-ended so that you can uh, get a little more use out of them and get more shapes. This is a bigger set. This is an old Italian set. This is a Chinese set, but they seem to be of very decent quality. These are an old set of Italian rifflers I've had for ages, but they're a very handy file. For instance, to make these barley twist candlesticks, I actually uh, carve these in the lathe between centers, and I use chisels to carve most of this out. But as you start to break through to a 3 8 hole that you drill through the center, this is handy to get down in there. And then you can take a riffler file and come around like this and round the back of that. 
you can use the smaller shapes here to do the same thing. So Riffler files are very handy. So I hope that you give files and rasps a try and add a few to your shop. Buy them as you need them. Uh, good good uh, rasps are expensive. You're looking at uh, a cabinet maker's rasp, a good one being uh, 60 to to $100 today. You know, buy them as you need them, add them, but uh, you'll find that they bring a lot of good ends to situations that you would spend a lot more money on getting the results that you get with a simple rasp. So thanks for visiting. I look forward to your next visit.